back to watching yeah. the circle. Philanthropy, it's a really big word, and it's meaning puzzles a lot of adults, not to mention kids. But there are now some kids in Sydney who now not only know what philanthropy means, but have first-hand experience of it thanks to an initiative called Kids in Philanthropy. Take a look. That's fantastic. Kids in philanthropy. It's all about kids helping other kids, as the kids said. We're delighted to welcome one of the founders, Indigo Wallace, and her mum, Dr. Katrina Wallace. It's a great day to be here, Indigo, because you get the day off school. It's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Katrina, uh, philanthropy, you're very busy yourself. You've got three companies, market research and an analyst. What got you interested in philanthropy? Well, Steve, I've been brought up in a very philanthropic family, so I was lucky enough to be in a family that uh, had a particular focus on giving back and mm. particularly to uh, in Indigenous people in, in Australia. That's wonderful. And let's, let's bring you, um, you into the picture here, Indigo. Tell us, you're at school and you were struggling a little bit with something at school. Tell us what you were struggling with and then basically how you got some help. I was struggling with reading and once my mum found out I was dyslexic, she went and helped me go into multilet and helped me learn to read. That's, and you had a really wonderful teacher and you went to some extra classes outside of school. Yeah. Now that obviously is a little bit expensive though, wasn't it? Yeah, and yeah. And so what did you say to mum and dad, you know, after that experience? You went, you went to mum and you said something about what the joy that you had had from being able to learn properly. What did you say to them? Um, I said that I knew that there was kids that couldn't, didn't have the support I had to go to multi and literacy circles things. So I started a charity to go help them and learn to go somewhere, somewhere to go help them read. Katrina, it seems like there's a, a real trend that people are tapping into where kids actually teaching kids mm -hmm. and kids helping kids is a really um, successful way of making things stick. Is that your experience? Well, it, it is and as you would know, the children love nothing better than being with other children and mm. children don't see differences when they're at this age mm. so I think there's a real movement in, in Australia now about starting to instill these values of giving and a social consciousness mm. in, in kids because it's so natural it's, it's much harder to learn those skills when you're an adult. How mm. have you actually raised money? Wow, we've done lots of things. So Indigo has, and I do a lot of public speaking. So we're very lucky to be um, with Abigail Disney last year on stage with, with her. Who's, who's Abigail Disney? Ah, so she is Walt Disney's grand niece and one of uh, the US's leading philanthropists. And yeah. she's, the, the US are actually much, much more generous uh, in giving money than Australians are. Mm. Per capita is about twice... Uh, what we give is, is what the Americans mm. give, interestingly enough. So Indigo, you and your brother have just been incredible because you've set up this wonderful charity. What do you enjoy the most about seeing other kids who are not as fortunate maybe as you and your brother being able to receive help? It just makes you really happy to see kids doing stuff that they would have never been able to do if they didn't get help. And do you have a favourite story? Um, what about Yoni and Malachi? Oh, yeah. Tell us about Yoni and Malachi. Well, um, their mum's from Africa and... She's a refugee? She's a refugee and she's had a lot of troubles. And now, um, Yoni and Malachi are really close friends to us. Oh, oh that's gorgeous. great. I think kids have a really strong sense of what's fair and, and mm. injustice and they want to work to make things fairer for everyone. But I, I was interested in something that you said, Katrina, which, uh, which was that, um... You came late to philanthropy, you came mm. late to giving mm. charitably. It wasn't until you were in your 40s. Can yeah. you explain why you think it came, it arrived so late? Yeah, and it's interesting, Yumi. So uh, even having been brought up in a family with social consciousness, I still bought lots of stuff for myself. I've got five kids, so the kids are all equipped out with technology mm. overseas holidays. And I've just got to a stage in my mid-40s where I've gone, 
actually it's enough it's too I have too much mm. and it was making me uncomfortable on lots of levels and now very much the money that we have as a family that we would have used for just buying more stuff we now give into into philanthropy and into these charities but the real difference I think in what we're doing is we don't just give money and then don't see where it goes we actually are following it through so Indigo Express so Indigo's our literacy fund. We're working with the National Centre of Indigenous Excellence. We're funding Indigenous kids learning to read and we are physically there seeing and working with the children. Mm. So it's this real hands-on touch now around philanthropy which I think philanthropy has been uh, inaccessible to a lot of Australians. It's a, it's a big word and it, it's associated with no offence, Steve. Silver-haired men. <laughs> Are you saying this is silver-haired? Perhaps. <laughs> bit of gold. But also, it's, gold. you're right in that it's about Katrina, giving the money and sending it off and hoping yeah. that it does the right thing, whereas I think you'd hit the nail on the head when you said Australians want to see what their money is doing. They yeah. want to see the yeah. difference, and if they can see that, they're actually really generous. Yeah, and I think that's kids in philanthropy, the, the whole program we've set up is about children and their families coming together, the children making, decision, children making decisions on fundraising, children making decisions on where the funds will go, and then actually the whole family learning about giving and going through to, to see you know, the Indigenous children reading or we're, we're partnering with Fairfield in Sydney to give um, to high-risk refugee kids. So in, well, in a nutshell, Katrina, just in one sentence, mm -hmm. if people want to help, what do they do? Beautiful. So we have a website, which is www.kip.org.au. They can uh, register, they can make a donation, or they can um, make a donation and come to workshops that we're running for families where kids and their parents learn, not even their parents, kids and their carers mm -hmm. learn about how to give and about philanthropy. Well, two wonderful ambassadors for a wonderful cause. You'll find more about Kids in Philanthropy on the Circle's website. And will you please thank Katrina and daughter Indigo. <laughs> Nikki has in store for us.